Come through, queen. I want to see you come through, queen. Hi, everyone. It's Dan. And Liz. And this is Come Through, Queen. Hi. Hi, Liz. This is Liz Bentley from Feathers in My Hair podcast, also from Liz Explains It All. Uh, it's a joy to have you here this week filling in for Brendan. I am high. I'm like a Come Through Queen super fan. I <laughs> remember finding it. Uh, I think Neely actually was the mm. one who had posted about it somewhere. Okay. And I like binged all of the episodes and... It's rare that a podcast like stays in my rotation because I get very tired of things. Yeah. Uh, but Come Through Queen has been in my rotation and now I've like managed to make you guys my friend. I know. I love it. We uh, met you at Las Culturistas Lincoln Center uh, show and that was so much fun that night. That I will say like that was one of the most fun things I've ever been to just because like I was so unsure what exactly it would be and it just surpassed my expectations so much. Yeah, for sure. In a way I wasn't expecting but and then we went out and it was such a fun night. Yeah, exactly. So tell us about Feathers in My Hair. Okay, so I have a podcast about the show Teen Mom. Yes, Teen Mom yes. is still on the air in 2022. <laughs> There's a new uh, iteration of it called Teen Mom, The Next Chapter. They've merged the cast. Okay. Um, so I cover the new episodes every week, but I also do a lot of the throwback episodes because they're mm -hmm. really fun to talk about. Uh, I keep up with like the Teen Mom news. And then I have a Patreon called Liz Explains It All where <laughs> I talk about everything. Actually, this week I did a Potomac episode, Ooh. but I do like internet culture stuff like influencer stuff uh documentaries like a whole wide range of things i just talk about yeah brendan's been on for below deck yes episodes, i believe and i have to get you on for real housewives of atlanta season seven okay why <laughs> i know you're seven? a claudia jordan fan oh yes 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 yes, yes, yes. of course I, oh my god the big we gotta do the big nini claudia fight at dinner Exactly. And the only woman to ever take Needy down by that point and then was not asked back after one season despite having a great season. Exactly. Okay. Also, I like I watched Teen Mom back in the day. And mm -hmm. I have two questions for you, Teen Mom related. Sure. And this is probably like a this is gonna like sound like a basic Teen Mom question, but what is your feeling on the fact that like the original kids are uh years away from being the age of their mothers when they started the show? It's sick. This is like an albatross around my neck. Like, <laughs> like they're 13. The original yeah. kids are 13. Um, I think MTV is secretly hoping one of them will have a teen pregnancy so oh, that they can no. follow them. <laughs> no. I mean, why, why wouldn't they do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. And then the other question is, I remember Brendan and I talking about this. This is super early come through Queen. Like, Teen Mom kind of really started the trend of breaking the fourth wall. Yes, which is, I am a fourth wall obsessed person. I am super into like the meta commentary of it all. I've sure. always found the production of reality TV more interesting than the actual show itself. Yeah. I, I just love the idea of like filming and producing and editing real people and Teen Mom it it was unbearable without breaking mm -hmm. the fourth wall. It was really the only way to keep the show on the air because for they were pretending that these girls were just normal people. Like yeah. when they were so fucking famous, like at one point Janelle was doing like an appearance at a spring break thing. And she's like, mom, I have to go to spring break. And it was just like <laughs> so funny. But what she's not saying, is she's getting paid like $50,000 to go like right. party in Texas or weekend. So it yeah. really didn't make sense to keep the show on the air without breaking the fourth wall. But I am like every show should break the fourth wall. Mm. I, I, I just love hearing them talk about being on a TV show. And yeah. I'm actually surprised like more shows haven't followed suit. Yeah. I mean, I think on the housewives we've been doing it gradually and yes. we're going to get to it obviously with Potomac this week, which was like a huge fourth wall moment mm -hmm. at the end of the episode. But yeah. I mean like team mom really like started that trend, I would say. Yeah. And I've been noticing on Housewives slowly, like how they mention reunions now mm -hmm. during the season. Remember, it used to always be like last year 
when yeah, this happened last year. Yeah, last year in LA or yeah. like in New York if they were like traveling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would always be like really, they would never say the word reunion, but they're mm-hmm. like openly talking about the reunions now. And they're definitely, I mean, talking more about the house, like the housewives. Yeah. it make, It's a little easier for housewives because the idea is all these women are like rich and fabulous and famous. Mm-hmm. So it's like not as weird as Teen Mom was where like they are just like living in Wilmington, North Carolina, like yeah. pretending to be a normal person. Um, but I, I, I just think it makes sense. Like what's happening. I, especially in the age of social media, it's like mm-hmm. impossible not to break the fourth wall because we have like, and when they're fighting about production, it's like, mm. so just talk about it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Brennan is, uh, off this week. He has a ton of work stuff going on. However, he did, uh, chat with me earlier in the week about his experience at BravoCon. So, We're going to kick it over there to my conversation with Brendan. And here we are with Brendan with a special report. Yes. From BravoCon. I'm here. I could not not report on being at BravoCon. It would have felt (laughs) rude. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we appreciate your journalism. Sure. Yeah. So what's to say about BravoCon? I feel like I think it. Actually, you know more in mm. some ways about like what was going on outside oh. the world of BravoCon yeah. because like when you're in it, you don't know all the news that's coming out. Yeah, for sure. I, like and like, it's funny how we talked about this last week. How we send a correspondent on the field and keep someone at the news station. It makes sense. Exactly. So BravoCon was a long weekend. I'm still exhausted from it. But it was interesting. It was fun. Um, They scaled up in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask, how would you say it differed from 2019? It really, like 2019 felt very boutique compared to this. Mm, Okay. Um, And 2019, it felt like you kind of were in it more with all the Bravo liberties where... 2022 when they would walk through the bazaar or whatever it was like i'm not even joking when i like compare it to like the beatles or something coming to the u.s okay people were screaming people were following them around i remember watching andy walk through like the main space of the um convention center and people were like mobbing him he had two security guards it was wild Wow, wow 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 There were lines the length of Javits to get photos with Sutton Strack. Mm, okay. It's, and a lot of these women, I think, like, were getting emotional because they were like, I'm, they're not normal people, obviously. They're celebrities <laughs> in their own way, but they're not like, they're not celebrities who usually see this kind of reaction to them. Yeah. So I think it was like a pretty overwhelming for a lot of them being like, oh my God, like, we're being treated like actual rock stars. There's a video of Kenya crying that's very sweet. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So Friday, I got to be in the press room, which was interesting. So yeah. um, kind of got up close and personal with a lot of them. And I even talked directly to some of the best ones, which I know. is so fun. I, it's actually funny how things work out because like you got to speak to the ones that you really needed to speak to. I, would I know. Say. <laughs> so I interviewed a few people, um, but to me, the highlights were Sutton and Garcelle oh and two of the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah. Gar- Garcelle's such a professional, you know, somebody has like been in the business and is so good at this. And like, it's, there's a reason she's like so beloved because I was only allowed to have one question with her because, like, it's a long press line. People are running late because they have to be at, like, panels and that kind of thing. I asked my one question, and at the end of it, she said, thank you so much, Brendan. She remembered my name from the introduction at the beginning of the uh, conversation, which I Oh, my God. Wow. (laughs) I mean, but, like, like, that goes back to what you were saying, that many of these women don't have to do this ever, really. And she's been a famous actress for like 30 years. Exactly. Yeah. She looked stunning too. She was an all leopard, Mm. like shoes, everything. 
Um, great. And then Sutton, we kind of bonded over being from Georgia. Mm, I, I, of course, of course. Which was better. nice. Um, so I love that. I also talked to like Brooks, who was lovely. Uh, um, I got to see Hoda and Savannah and they were actually my be real. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a special moment. Yeah, for sure. My be real hit like the moment they were like right next to me in the press line, which you can't ask for anything better. It's like you've, you've actually never been more real than that moment. Exactly. I mean, people know my history. A lot of people know if they've been following me, um, know my history with Hoda. We, and by that, I mean like I've been a big fan for years. Yeah. I mean, the only way it could have been better if it was Ann Curry. True. Good point. Or <laughs> Meredith Vieira. Um, so that was fun. Also other people who came through who I, I didn't talk to directly. All of the Beverly Hills women came through. I saw Lisa Rinna right after the Beverly Hills panel and she okay. was like loving the fact that she was booed. Yeah. She like called it her career highlight and all that kind of stuff. It was just interesting to see them right after that because the Beverly Hills panel, I think like was one of the most talked about because people like had problem in line at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, that's why on the back in the news station, we were seeing reports of like people crawling underneath the like the little gated mm -hmm. entrance and like bum rushing the entrance pushing security guards giving like fire fest vibes but from what i understand like that was the only real instance of something like that happening yeah and i think it was very specific so can i give context because I, mm -hmm. I was actually kind of on the floor during that because i needed to like get out of it was really hot in the press room because of the lights yeah. so i needed to go for a walk the moment that beverly hills was letting in meaning the mm -hmm. line was moving was yeah. Andy walking across the convention floor. Mm. So I think what happened, a lot of people from the Beverly Hills line wa wanted to go see Andy, try to get a photo. And then they were running back to also try to get into the panel. I got to say like the videos of people kind of like chasing after people, holding the phone, trying to get a selfie. I just like, I wish I could understand it. I think it's like, that's what convention culture is. It's like, you go to take the photos, I guess. Oh, no, but I, like, to me, and not that if you wait in line for, the, for like, the meet and greet picture and, like, one sentence conversation, mm -hmm. you're, you're becoming best friends, but at least it's a little bit more, like, you'll get a good photo out of it versus, like, a psychotic, like, holding it up, no one's going to end up looking good Yeah. moment. I wonder if they'll do the photos like the meet and greet photos the same way they did this year next time they do it because last time it was like you would go to a panel and then in the room of the panel was the meet and greet set up after the panel so okay. you would go through the line and meet and this one it's like you're lining up just to meet which is interesting yeah um so the lines were like a lot longer for that the lines were i mean like i don't think it was fire festival vibes at all i think beverly hills was the only incident yeah. um and like there were lines, but it's like there's a lot of there's thirty five thousand people coming to this, so of course there's lines. Sure, uh, I remember in twenty nineteen you said your favorite panels were the producer heavy panels. Mm -hmm. Did you have any favorite panels this go around? So, favorite panel was probably OC. Okay, and then Ultimate Girls Trip, but OC was just fun because we're it was fun to see them interact in the middle of filming. Yeah, because we were discussing this, that it's them and Atlanta. Like, they're the only ones really filming right now. Mm -hmm. Beverly so, Hills hasn't started. I had my eyes peeled for, like, how body language between, like, Heather and all the girls, because we've heard rumors. Sure. And I will say, I think Heather is here to play. Okay. Which is good. And then Tamara's really here to play in a specific way. Yeah, Tamara from Watch What Happens Live clips and little bits and pieces I've seen is coming off a little corny. Yeah, like her th her going against Jill so hard at Watch What Happens Live. I'm like, yeah, poor Jill. Um, also, Chrissy Teigen was like two seats away from me at the OC panel. Mm, okay. Which was cool to see, I guess. Sure. Um, oh, question about OC panel. How was Taylor with the girls? She was good. You could tell she was excited to be there. Um, mm -hmm. she's just like, you know, Taylor, she's just like, I don't know. I can't get a read on her till I see her in the space. I don't think. Yeah. So there was no, no hints of like what her involvement on the show is going to be. Um, just that she's filming. She's bringing a lot of like spark that I think we, we saw in, um, ultimate girls trip to that is what they implied. Did they talk about the new girls at all? No, they just referenced that there will be new girls. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
And then also on Sunday was Ultimate Girls Trip panel. So it was mm-hmm. a one about season two, but then they surprised us, surprised us with the cast of season three, except for Portia. Yeah. And the trailer. I know, which I thought we were going to get much like the Miami trailer, get the the actual trailer online. And it seems like that's still not happened. I know it's interesting, but the trailer looks exciting. And I think we kind of thought that it was going to be exciting because it's such a weird mix of girls. Okay. I, t- to be honest, watching the trailer online is hard to even understand really what's going on. Like what can you parse from the trailer? I think Lee is going to be a bigger part of it than we expected in a good way. In a good way. It looks like she's doing a lot. Um, yeah. uh, Heather and Whitney's still going on, which will be interesting, like, given timing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do the reunion uh, that'll be filmed after Ultimate Girls Trip. I know. And Ultimate Girls Trip airing after that. Yeah, that's going to be weird. It looks chaotic. Um, people, were, I guess, like, some producers are comparing it to, like, scary island in the chaos which okay. would be fun do we get do we have a good read on what's going on with the miami girls i couldn't understand their involvement in the trailer it seems like mary saul's like getting drunk in the morning that's what leah okay that's who she's talking to i couldn't figure out who leah was talking to yeah leah was like yeah mary saul's drinking vodka at 9 a.m or something like that okay um and then uh, yeah alexia might not be like too much in the fray but you never know what the trailers right and then and it's it's Portia versus Leah because they do the Portia Leah, Portia Leah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that fight actually looked fun. That fight actually, I think, looks like it will go down as like iconic because mm. they're just saying each other's names. It's almost it reminded me of a uh, who you and OC. So it's the audio quality is so bad. I thought Portia was saying Leah Mob, but then I don't think no. anyone is saying that. I thought she was saying. <laughs> Yeah, like that would have been so funny to me. <laughs> she was saying Leah Mob. I think she was saying Leah stop, and then she was oh, Leah was then, saying Portia stop. I know. I thought <laughs> she was saying Leah Mob, Portia Mob. <laughs> um, but oh, that God. was very exciting too. And then I went to watch Robin's Live, the one that's airing. I think maybe at some point this week. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, which which theme was it? It was like the the shady Read, ones. Yeah, like the re like the I reading read room. The reading room. Okay, so what? I, I it seems like they're editing down these episodes a lot. Yeah. What's like a big moment for you? From I mean, that? the big moment was the Erica Jane thing that has been discussed mm. already, where she said that Dorit and PK would be the next couple from Beverly Hills to break up. So PK's not there. I no. mean, Erica, I mean, Dorit and PK are not there. No. And like, yeah. it was like shocking in the room when it happened. Mm-hmm. Everyone was like gasping. I was sitting yeah. with like two random women. Okay. Now, just back in the newsroom, I think something that us on the outside were kind of shocked and confused by was the Jen Shah <laughs> aspect of it all. So... Yes, I was too. And I was actually home already um, on Friday night, back from BravoCon, when I saw Tamara start to go live, and then I saw Teddy Joe start to go live. I don't follow mm-hmm. Teddy, but for some reason I knew to look for her going live. Okay. Yeah. And, um, oh, Teddy was also parked in the press room all Friday, interviewing people for two days on the pod. Yeah. And I've listened to some of the episodes. They're pretty good. Okay. Um, But yeah, so... Tamara goes live and Jen Shaw's in her hotel room with her and Teddy. Then like Heather Gay is somewhere in the back sure. and of course. everyone's kind of lit. And Jen Shaw's just like, I'm innocent. I, not, she's not saying I'm innocent, but she's like, I'm not going to jail. Mm. And then apparently she was going to try to crash the legends ball on Friday, yeah. the watch what happens yeah. live episode. But Tamara allegedly texted Andy from what I've heard, like yeah. through, listening to radio Andy and all this stuff. And so that didn't happen, but Jen Shaw did go to some after parties. Yeah. I mean, so I'm bringing this up because I'm curious on how this is going to now play out on Salt Lake city. Cause I think Andy said something like once she pled guilty, we ended our engagement with Jen Shaw. Yeah. So does that mean we're not getting post guilty confessionals? 
I don't know. And then also the other thing is he said on the radio yesterday morning that he wants to interview her. But yeah. He didn't say anything about her potentially coming to the reunion. I think him wanting to interview her implies no to the reunion. Mm-hmm. You know, he wants to do like a, a Kim Richards one-on-one sit down. Yeah. Which a four person reunion, much like Ron, <laughs> where we just said <laughs> two on each side when Jacqueline did not come. I know though. We'll hopefully the friends get more involved. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is like, hopefully the friends get more involved, but Jen Shaw being cut off by Bravo only occurred once filming essentially was over. Yeah. I also, I would be careful to completely trust any wording of Andy Cohen being asked that question on stage Mm. and like what that actually means. You know, it's like, sometimes you can, sometimes we can all word things like interestingly and like not the way we exactly meant it. So I wouldn't take it as Bible that she's definitely not going to be doing any more filming with Bravo. Yeah. I think something to keep your eye on is watch Robin's live bookings. For sure. Yeah. Anything else from BravoCon? Well, Deandra and Mama D were walking around. (laughs) Two fans. And I thought it was cute that Andy gave them a shout out in the audience at Watch Happens Live. Yeah. It's like if Caroline Manzo and like Ebony are invited to be on the Legends Ball, why can't we get Deandra? I know that's what like, that's the part that makes me feel sad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, it's like Caroline Manzo literally has nothing to do with Bravo right now. At least you could say for Ebony, she was on the most recent season of Roni. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I feel like they're always talking to Caroline, trying to get her to come back. Sure. Oh, and then um, just a couple other things I wanted to note. Um, When I was going to pick up my press pass, my press ticket for watch weapons live, you had to go into like the New Yorker hotel, you know, on eighth Avenue or whatever, with that big sign. And I like checked in. And as I was leaving, who do I see? Eva. And I said something. I had been at dinner right before that, so I probably said something so dumb, but mm. it was all well received by her. I was probably like, you're beautiful. You look like a model. You are a model. You have Linda you're my favorite. And then another thing I did at one point is like, as I was leaving the vacations panel, which um, that was where uh, Candace and one of the producers from Potomac were on, mm. I saw Chris Bassett, and I decided just to like, as I was walking out, like, Hey, and pat him on the back and then just leave. That's like bro. That's like bro culture. <laughs> it's I'm a bro. You are a bro. <laughs> okay. I think one last thing before you go, oh, which I think is maybe the biggest news of BravoCon, the official Roni cast reboot announcement. Oh my God. So I was sitting at dinner with our friends, Jamie, Cal, and Tynan, like <laughs> before going back to BravoCon. Sure. We get the announcement. And I was like, I just didn't know what to do. Cause like, I was like, Jenna Lyon, like Jenna Lyons. Yeah. I was like shaking. I, at one point I was like, should I ask the waitress if she cares about this news? And we decided against that. Yeah. Um, I, I just didn't know what to do. Cause like, I am not a fashion girly, but like, I know Jenna Lyons because like it, she's a well-known figure. Um, such interesting news. It's just also with a with a weekend that was so focused on like Roni nostalgia in a lot of ways. Yeah. With like there was a lot of Luann, there was like a lot of Ramona, there was a lot of Sonia. It's like I wish we could see Jenna with like Lou, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the th- the weird thing is like Jenna is not exactly a peer of these other women. Mm-hmm. They're almost all in their thirties, with like one gal in her early forties. And how old is Jenna? Fifty-four. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought she was like mid forties. No, no. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, to me though, I think these other women, a lot of them had been rumored mm-hmm. for a while, and especially um, maybe the one who's causing the most controversy, Lizzie Savesky. Yeah. Um, Because she has proud Zionist in her uh, Instagram profile. Mm -hmm. And she was previously 
testing for Dallas while she lived in Dallas, which is wild. So it's like, okay, Dallas, no, okay, uh, let's do New York, sure. There are no rules. Also interesting, I thought I had it on pretty good... um, I thought I had insider information from someone that Legacy was going ahead before the new Mm -hmm. women, but obviously not. But apparently... They're going to start having talks about legacy now, according to Andy on Radio Andy this week. And some people think online that um, this new Roni has already started filming, but they're not filming until next week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Like the Jenna Lyons aspect, though, what I was going to say in terms of the other women being rumored, no one was talking about Jenna Lyons as an option. At all. Surprise. Did she walk by the Javits Center just like on a walk and a producer handed her like a big bag of money like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I saw it. <laughs> you saw it happen on the and field. Deandra and Mama D were watching. <laughs> <laughs> and like she tried to grab the, the bag, but Jenna like held it real tight. I just like, that's another fascinating thing is like, I would love to know how much money she's getting. Yeah. And I think we both are foaming at the mouth to watch Stylish with Jenna Lyons. Oh, yeah. It's, that's not on HBO Max anymore? We tried last night, and it's not. I'm hearing that it's on Hey You. I don't know if we can even get that. You can with a VPN. Mm, love a VPN. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully we figure it out. But, I mean, I think I'm curious to see how this plays out. And it's and it's and it's it's different than Salt Lake City, because Salt Lake City was just announced. And it's like, all right, we'll see you when we see you. But mm-hmm. now we're going to be following this. I know. Oh my god! It's, it. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the news had me shaking. I was calling people on my way back to um, <laughs> the Bravo Con. Like I was you calling call me. I know because I know you. I knew you would have been annoyed if I called. Mm-hmm. I called um, Sophia Phillips, yeah. who once co-hosted with me, because right. I was like, I know she cares about. Yeah. Jenna Lyons joining. Yeah, I would have told you to save it for the show. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are. Can't even call my friend. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for giving your report. Of course. Um, Have a great rest of the episode. Hi, Liz. Yeah, let's get back to me and Liz. Bye. Bye. And we're back with uh, me and Liz. So, Liz, what were some of your takeaways from BravoCon? Like, I, I know you weren't there, but, like, what did you enjoy from the news coming out of it? So I will say I, I'm i not that surprised that it was pretty overcrowded because even though this is their second year, this yeah. is really the first time they're doing it on such a large scale. Sure. Because remember in 2019, they couldn't get the Java Center. So yep. it was like at five different locations. Yeah. They sold way less tickets. So in a way, this really was like the first time they were doing BravoCon. So I'm mm-hmm. like not shocked that it was disorganized. Yeah. Um conventions are not for me right like yeah. they're they're not for me i i would never go to one but i i get why people do like i under i do understand that and yeah. i guess like i love to see the stuff that comes out of the panels um i find the mindset though around the audience at these panels to be very interesting because like with the booing of the lisa renna like fine sure. i don't care about lisa renna was yeah. booed. please yeah. don't get me wrong But like, I saw someone on Reddit who was like, we punished her by booing. And I was like, (laughs) oh no. (laughs) Like, like, there's an element at conventions. It's not usually people's real life. They're going to see people that act as characters, right? Like, or write books. But there is a weirdness. Like, you are booing a real person who's famous for being themselves. And there's a real element of like, weirdness of like, going to a place like heckle somebody Mm -hmm. that you watch every week i think that's what makes BravoCon kind of weird to me i'm not sure where like the line is yeah i mean i think you know a lot of people in the bravo fan universe online like to act like they are a housewife on the show and like be snarky and do this or that and i think i would assume most people at BravoCon are not doing that either because they have the common sense not to or they're shy they're like too shy to actually behave like that in real life but you do get like the occasional freak yeah like really being 
rude and crazy and not just appreciating that this is your entertainment. Yeah. And yeah. like, I also think it Im- invites a certain level of person. I think you're exactly right. Like that they want to be a housewife and mm-hmm. they like think they're on the show. <laughs> yeah. And this is always an issue in like audience participation things. Like I usually hate to watch a Q and a or like mm. a call in show. Like, I, I don't know. I get really bad sick and hand embarrassment is what it is like really yeah. bad. And so this element of people like performing for the questions, like, sure. it, it it's tough for me. Um, but I do think like, like it's fun. Like Erica saying like PK and Dorit will be the next to break up. I was laughing so hard because I'm like, sure. good for Erica. She got the girls going. Yeah. Like, like Erica's coming off the worst season she's ever had. And all <laughs> she had to do is say one fucking line and everybody's like, yes. I mean, like the moment, probably the biggest moment of the Bravo Con Watch Ravens Live episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But besides all of that going on, Bravo is airing so many shows right now, particularly ones that we cover on this podcast. Um, And we do need to kind of check in with the Winterhouse kids from the premiere. So what's your feeling on like Winterhouse and the cast here? Okay, so I didn't watch Winterhouse last year, but I do watch Summer House. Sure. Um, I I think the issue with Winterhouse is that loses the thing that makes summer house unique which is that Mm. they are really only there for three days a week and they do have jobs and like this is a lot more like we are filming a reality tv show than summer houses and i don't know like it was fine i guess but part of the issue is is like most of these people actually aren't friends with each other like it's random people yeah so we're just watching like random people partying which isn't that (laughs) fun for me yeah um I love this idea that we're supposed to believe that Kyle and Amanda are an incredible place I'm like oh "Mm." I believe I believe (laughs) okay I am like Kyle Cook's number one anti-fan I like I cannot stand him and I love Amanda so much okay and I just you know it just Kyle um Kyle just disturbs me as mm-hmm. a person that's in recovery from sub- substance abuse. Um, sure. Kyle like really gets Sam uh friend of the pod. Sam was mm-hmm. on Liz explains it all. And we talked about summer house and we were laughing that like the contract that Kyle signed, like he'll be sharing about that in AA one day. Like okay. that is like just such classic alcoholic behavior that I, I find Kyle like unnerving in a real life way, sure, <laughs> you know, sure, like sure, sure. triggering, I guess. But yeah. I just went better for Amanda is, is what I'm saying. But yeah, I, I mean, I, it is nice to watch them not fighting. I will say, like, it's a change of pace that I enjoy. But Craig is unbearable. Ooh, yeah. I mean, he's coming in, ruling the roost. And it's kind of like, hey, last season, you were c- our guest, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, you... I, I mean, I watched Southern Charm until... I don't know. I didn't. You know? Mm. Like, I, I watched maybe five Same. seasons of Southern yeah. Charm. Like... I follow Southern charm. Um, So it's not that I don't know Craig, but like watching Craig come in and he's just yelling at people and Paige is so embarrassed. I'm like, girly, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, like I've been a Paige fan for a very long time and and she still entertains me, but I don't love her and Craig so much. Maybe No, it's hard to watch a girl that I think is like really cool and independent and great. Like be embarrassed by her shitty boyfriend. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I just, I don't know. I like, I think I would have liked it better. I mean, I know why Lindsay and Carl aren't there. They like needed a break from filming, whatever they're like in their little love nest. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I would have just liked it better if it was summer house in the winter. I think that the different cast members just don't really do it for me. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Lindsay, we have Lindsay's doppelganger, Jessica, joining us. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad we're acknowledging it on the show too. And like showing it side by side. I, the crypto metaverse person, like yeah. what, what a metaverse entrepreneur, like <laughs> what the fuck? Get out of here. I mean, the scene of her and Luke <laughs> talking about like, she's like, oh, well, I'm a crypto startup business owner. And he's like, oh my God, I own crypto too. <laughs> Never would I have imagined this hitting the airwaves. (laughs) Wait, why does Craig hate Luke? Did I miss something? Oh, yes. There was a little scene uh, that was like really quick where Craig was explaining how he and Austin stayed with Luke for the 4th of July, which then my head's like spinning. 
wait, was Luke not at the 4th of July? He was just home hanging out with Craig <laughs> and Austin. Like that doesn't make any sense. But apparently they were staying in his guest house and there were fireworks in the guest house and they started playing with them and Luke lost his shit. He's like, you guys are going to like, like set my house on okay. fire. What are you I'm doing? On Luke's side. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, they're troublemakers. The, the, guy, yes. the, the two guys were like, Oh, you left them here. We thought that was for us to play with. <laughs> oh my God. I think Luke just isn't down to do the behavior of Craig mm. and Austin. Yeah. In a way that they don't like. And I think it makes them, I think Luke has a little bit of a mirror effect on them and that like he's doing the same thing on the same show, but he doesn't have to like go up to an 11 the way that they do. And I think that is unnerving to them. Yeah. It's interesting with Luke because he was such a non-entity this past season of Summer House. Mm -hmm. And now this episode, he's kind of almost the main character. Yeah. I mean, I think it was just weird last year. Like they brought him in as a replacement, essentially. Mm. Like, yeah. yeah. They, I think they didn't fully know how to like edit him into the show. Sure. But yeah, I, I, I think Luke is good on this show. I, Jason is fun. Um, the, what's her name? The florist. Mm. I, I don't know when she was like, I hate my birth name. And I'm like, we, this is maybe not for Bravo or we need to slow this down and like yeah. have a real yeah. conversation about this because you just shared something like really, really heavy that has a hundred different layers and Bravo's like, eek. It moves on. I know in your avocado costume. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like we, like we're talking about transracial adoption, international, yes. international transracial yes. adoption. Yes, yes, yes. yes which yes. is so fucking heavy. Sure. And for her to just like drip that in, which is not her fault. Like she's just talking about herself. Yeah, it's yeah. Bravo that like I was like, are we gonna talk more about this? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we're just like planting a seed to have a. a I hope conversation so. later on. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, Jason, it's just, I, I feel like we're going into another, well, so you didn't, you're only meeting Jason really for the first time now. Cause he wasn't in uh, summer house. So he kind of had like the same kind of sad storyline of like trying to get some of the girl's attention and failing. And he's essentially bringing this girl in and losing her immediately to Luke. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, it it's a weird dynamic because it's like, well, is she do you hook up with her? Like it's a little confusing. Oh, I wanted to talk about Sierra, who mm. I just want Sierra, like I am always like, I just want you to be better than you mm. are. Like yeah. you are so beautiful, you're fun. You obsessing over Austin is unbearable to me mm. and I am rooting for you Sierra and is this just going to be another season of her like trying to get with Austin well now uh in the preview for next week or the season to come really she's showing interest in that douchey frat brother of Craig oh, Corey Craig yeah Corey so, Craig Corey yeah Corey yeah Oh, right. Cause Craig, is, Craig, is <laughs> oh, yeah. I, Sierra just like, I, I like Sierra yeah. when she's not interacting with men. Mm, yeah. That makes sense. Or Lindsay Hubbard. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's going to be a rough reunion. Cause I mean, Lindsay and Carl will show up at some point. Yeah. This show really, I mean, Summer House, which the show is without yeah. Lindsay is bizarre. Sure. Yeah. She's main I, character, you know, she is, and she, she always has been. And she's able to exist in a way outside of the cliques that really pulls the show together. And without mm. her there, I am missing her presence. Speaking of Lindsay, did you catch the news out of BravoCon? Yes. That she and Danielle are on the outs. Yes, I did. I'm curious about that i'm definitely curious about it i'm looking forward to seeing it play out um i'm kind of wondering if Lindsay getting into a serious relationship changed their dynamic especially with a man that yes danielle hooked up with at some point yes and i think danielle is in you know she's in that relationship with what's his face yeah. and robert yeah i happy i think from what they say um but i think the issue is that her and Lindsay have this dynamic of Lindsay being like the really messy friend mm -hmm. and Danielle being like very codependent, like taking care of her. Sure. And 
a lot of times when you have those type of dynamics and then somebody starts to be better, like Mm -hmm. it can really mess with the friendship. And I'm curious if something like that happens because I'm trying to imagine a situation in which Danielle is the betrayer. Mm. That's hard for me to imagine. So I'm thinking it has to do with dynamics and I wouldn't be surprised if, I don't know, maybe, maybe she doesn't like Lindsay with Carl and okay says it i yeah. i'm very curious about what it could be yeah what is the reason we don't really have that answer and it seems like we're not going to get that till summer house because danielle has no part in winter house they air summer house like way too far from the summer i'm like oh i know <laughs> we're not getting that show for like <laughs> like another three months you know i think what's going to be it's probably going to be winter house then Vanderpump Rules, then Summer House. Oh my God. Oh, I can't believe Vanderpump Rules is coming back. I know. It's, it feels so... like even, We haven't watched Charming House Rules, BravoCon, Watch Rabbids Live yet, but seeing the pump people feels so inorganic in com- compared to like the other casts of yes. Southern Charm and uh, Summer House. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Wow. So that is Winter House. And why don't we continue on with Potomac? Yes, I am over the moon. Like, what an episode. I mean, this episode, I would say, is one of, like, the most riveting Potomac <laughs> episodes, housewife episodes ever. Ever. I, what, witnessing Giselle make such a miscalculation <laughs> in real time is so wild i cannot believe robin didn't call her and was like hey girl like don't yeah. go with that yeah well i mean robin she did kind of stand she up did for her. yeah but i'm surprised off mic she wasn't like giselle no yeah. No, yeah. no 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 especially after like so they had their lunch of like giselle starting and robin being like well actually like he chris is our friend yeah. like he's not sliding into Ashley's DMS to try to hook up with her, (laughs) you know, like, yeah, we've been to their house. Like we're all friends here. (laughs) Yeah. And she she was like, yeah, I know about, you told me about the reunion, but it wasn't anything. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as you mentioned earlier, we're saying the word reunion. Yes. Cause I think, I I think the reason for that is we're going into real specifics Mm -hmm. of things that are transpiring. Like I'm going into my, dressing room and he wants to have a conversation in there so i think there was no way of being like oh when we were in new york yeah yeah uh i i don't understand like and it seems like there's some either coordination with ashley yes for sure or the ashley thing happened and then she said oh let me use this yeah, it's possible that Ashley like called Giselle and was like, is it weird that Chris was in my DMs? Yeah. And then Giselle was like, oh, but her and Ashley are in it together mm-hmm. in yeah. some way. Can I just say, I'm mm-hmm. so proud of Candace. Mm-hmm. She has shown so much growth. Oh my God, legend. When Ashley, when they sit down for lunch or dinner or whatever, and yeah, Ashley yeah, yeah. is like telling her this. And in another life, Candace would have gotten up and screamed at her. Sure. And maybe like stormed out of the restaurant while smashing a plate on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And she just took it in and she said, okay, I don't really think that is anything. (laughs) Okay. I'm like, I genuinely think it's because she's happy. Yeah. I mean, she seems to be in a good place. She had her sister over this week, which I don't think we've ever really spent time with before. No. And I'm always quest- like confused about Candace's family's money. Like, mm, <laughs> she's yeah. like, we found her a property and we're building her a house. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a lot of money there. A lot. Yeah. We're also going on her IVF journey. So mm-hmm. she seems to be like happy about that. Even because like she's, she's going on this IVF journey as a um, preventative. Yeah, she's measure. freezing her embryos. Yeah. So just in case. They don't yeah. naturally get pregnant for a couple reasons. Yeah. One, in case they don't get naturally pregnant. Yep. Two, in case they do, but then in three years, she wants to have another baby. Exactly. She'd rather have embryos from when she's 35 than her 40-year-old eggs, which is yeah. a real, it's a real concern. If you have the $20,000 to do it, like, yeah. Yeah. it's worth doing if that's something you want. Like, I've thought about doing it at 34, but 
to me, it's just not worth the $20,000. Like I don't, I don't see myself building a family that way if it ever comes to that. Sure. But I think it makes total sense that Candace is doing it and it's a good idea. Yeah. So, I mean, like she's got that. We're jetting off to the Grammys in between filming scenes. (laughs) The I mean, like you, as you know, she is the most real housewife singer of all time. Oh yeah. She has, she's like doing a real singing career and I think it's like watching it like do well is great. And I think it like, is just really making her happy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think like to what you brought up earlier of so many people going to BravoCon and it being like so overwhelming crowds, blah, blah, blah. I'm surprised more people are not flocking to the Candace Dillard deep space tour because that's such an intimate, small venue to like really be up and close with a housewife yeah doing something like that they love I don't know like it's just <laughs> like it should be selling out <laughs> yeah she should be promoing it more well I yeah. think part of the issue is is that like it's the show is behind mm. it'd be yeah. nice if she could talk about it on the show sure yeah because like she it's interesting because she's talking about deep space deluxe on the show <laughs> and this yeah. is filmed back in March and here in October, we still don't have Deep Space Deluxe. Her album re-release, I'm like, why? Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, like artists release deluxe editions. Sure. Yeah. sure. Beyonce <laughs> does. Sure. Beyonce, Candace, hello, two peers. Like maybe Grammys. just put out a new EP if that's mm. what you want to do. Yeah. Well, I think like we got to have drive back on whatever album is yeah, coming out, you know? That, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so we pick up with the to be continued, and we're ending with the to be continued. I gotta say, Wendy saying being rude to Jacqueline was really funny. To okay, me. <laughs> that I cackled at that because I actually don't think she was trying to be rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that Wendy was. They're having this fight, and Jacqueline is talking, and I think Wendy once again, if they could talk about production, sure. I think what Wendy is saying is, "Are you filming?" Yeah. Are you a random woman like engaging in this group conversation? Are you mic'd up? Are you somebody that like matters? Do I need to be fighting with you or ignoring you? Because she's like, when she goes not to be rude, but who are you? That is so fucking funny. I like, I really don't think she was trying to be rude. I really think she was like, yeah, who is this person? Because when they film, they're only filming with mic'd up people, you know, like, especially at a party like this, where there are other people like, you can't waste your time arguing with someone that doesn't have a microphone on that isn't going to be on this show. And so exactly. I think Wendy was genuinely trying to gauge like where Jackie fell. I, the cackle I let out when she said that I rewound it and watched it again. Cause I thought it was so funny. Yeah, it was really funny. She's like, Oh, I didn't see you on the call sheet today. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did have Sharice and Katie both on the call sheet. <sighs> okay. Katie is the most terrifying, thrilling person in the world to me. Yeah. Um, when she showed up, first of all, her hair, she looked incredible. Stunning. Stunning. And she was in fun Katie mode. And I was like, yes, I love Katie. Get her back on the show. Yeah. And then I remember that Instagram post she did of her like lying naked on the floor oh, bleeding. God. And I'm yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Maybe bye, not. Katie. I, yeah. Maybe. No, 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 no. I can only have you here like smack and raise ass and like dancing around. Exactly. Yeah. I am curious as to how the Cherie stuff plays out over the course of the season. Yeah. I'm curious as to why. Yeah. I think, I think they wanted to rile up Karen, like production wants to rile her up. Yeah. And Karen doesn't seem to have a lot going on this season. Yeah. We're just kind of celebrating life and tacos. Yeah. And her new boobs. And Mm. it's kind of the same old thing with Ray where he is like, I want to go retire to Florida and she's, She's the age that Ray was when they met, basically. Yep, exactly. Um, and yeah, I just don't think she and she doesn't really have conflict with anybody on the cast. And I think that they know the show works better if there's conflict. Yeah, for, Karen. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we we have Mia and Jacqueline and uh, Big Daddy hanging out. Okay. No, Mia. I am so confused by Mia. Mm-hmm. By the way, I was really <laughs> laughing when Giselle was like. They think it's fake, too. Why aren't you guys speaking up now? It's like, because they weren't planning on calling her out, Giselle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like because they didn't think it was appropriate 
decided to go up to her at a party and be like, I think you're faking cancer. Yeah. It's very uh, Heather Gay energy right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, yes. no. Wh- no Whitney, 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 Whitney Rose. being yes, like, yes, why yes. isn't anybody else bringing this up? And they're like, because we didn't, we were just talking behind her back. This yeah. was not a to her face conversation. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. Um, But Mia, or yeah, Mia is... <laughs> I mean, I am still really hung up on that post she made about her brother-in-law, like, stealing her business. That being in my head, watching this, I'm like, she's a scammer. Because that's scammer behavior to put a business in somebody else's name that's not your own. Mm. That doesn't make any fucking sense. None at all. Like, nothing about this financial thing makes sense. Like, if she really started this business, there's no way he'd be able to push her out. Obviously, they put assets in his name. Mm -hmm. And you only do that for shady reasons, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like that, I don't know why she announced that at the beginning of the season. She honestly shouldn't have because everything she does for me is like colored by that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm questioning everything. And it is weird that she made, I thought she had cancer when she made that post. I was like tearing up for her. I mean, I thought, I I thought. It was kind of like, okay, I'm actually stepping back from the show now. Yes, because of because this. I have cancer. Yeah. So then when we learned that she was filming, I was like, wait, what? Ha- yeah. What happened to that part? Yeah. I, I don't follow Mia, but like that post was yeah. making the rounds, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I I like Jackie. I think it's good for Mia to have an ally. Um, Definitely. Especially after that reunion where she had n- not a soul. Yeah. And I do think that Mia blends in better than Wendy does with the rest of the cast okay. in that I think Wendy's issue is that she's never been able to like organically be in the group. And okay. I think Mia, like, I don't know, Mia, I think works better in group scenes than Wendy does. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good that they've brought in somebody for Mia. Um, and hopefully Jackie can like merge into the group as well. Yeah. I am a little hesitant about like real best friends coming on the show. I'm a little worried. About, I'm always a little worried about oh, yeah, that because course. I'm I mean, like, I don't want their friendship to end over the real housewives <laughs> of Potomac. I mean, the only thing worse you could do is bring on family. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that the dance, the dance school, I got to okay. say they had moves. They had some moves with the exception of Robin. <laughs> And I look behind me and I see Robin Dixon. (laughs) Yeah. Giselle looked incredible. Yeah. Do you think Karen was really sick? Oh yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Cause like, was she upset that Sharice was brought as a plus one to, to her party and now is just trying to like kill Sharice scenes by not participating? I don't, think so i think that she won't film one-on-one with sharice she's not going to lunch with okay her. okay karen's not fucking scared of sharice yeah i think karen didn't want to look stupid mm. can karen like get on her knees and dance like that like i kind of doubt it sure um and i think that she was like realizing that this was like stripper dance class remember when those were popular yeah um and i i kind of wonder if she was like I don't really want to because she's not scared of Sharice. You know what yeah. I mean? Like she's not scared to film with Sharice in a sure. group. Um, I I kind of wonder if she was like, that's just not for me because Karen doesn't like to look stupid. Yeah. Although she did have the moves when it came to the lean back dance about Wendy slithering. So. Yeah. I, I, it's not that she can't dance. It's that yeah. I don't know if she can do the WAP dance. Sure, 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 sure. sure. There's a big difference. Yes. And th- there is a, a significant age difference between her. Yes. And like Giselle and... Well, I don't know how much of an age difference, but like she's like older. Years. Yeah. She's older than the rest of the women. I kind of wonder if she was like, I'm just not really interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. I am still not over them like truly acting like Ashley is doing something on TikTok. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, first of all, Ashley's famous. <laughs> of course, she has TikTok followers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like she's not using the platform to do anything. She's just dancing, which is great. Her videos are fun, yeah. but they're like Ashley and her TikToks. Like it's pretty incredible. And I mean, like, I gotta say though, like I don't think many housewives succeed on TikTok. They don't. They absolutely don't. She is doing a good job. I'm yeah. not. It's not that, but it's like they're acting like she's a TikTok star yeah. and like she's, she's Addison not. Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's not, she hasn't really transitioned from being a housewife into a TikTok star, if that makes sense. She's yeah. a housewife that does good TikToks. And there's a difference between that and like being organically famous on TikTok. Sure. 
I mean, then this reminds me of the fact that this and the Luke stuff, she really is like a summer house peer. She, she, she could is. be on that show. <laughs> uh, she's younger than Lindsay Hubbard. Less. <laughs> Isn't that so wild? She's my, she's 34. Wait, Ashley's only 34? Yes. I looked it up yesterday. She's oh 34 years old. Um, She's beautiful. Yes. She is killing it this season. She's doing a good job this season. Um, yeah. When her and Giselle were going back and forth about like the divorce thing mm. at the dance studio, yeah. I when okay, when she goes, Michael didn't have a baby outside of our marriage. Michael didn't cheat on me. Yeah. And Giselle yeah. goes, What? And even Ashley hears what she's saying and starts <laughs> to laugh. <laughs> she goes, Lately. <laughs> <laughs> It was so I know, that was funny. funny. That it was, was funny. so, so funny. Although I will say, I think she's really holding back shit talking Michael because of the divorce and she wants oh, yeah. the house and the money and whatever. And I want her to be going in on Michael Darby. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get that till no. we are settled. A hundred percent agree. <laughs> and even then I'm, I'm not sure because I don't think they're ever going to, well, maybe if she like gets serious with someone else, but I think she's going to be financially entangled with Michael yes. Darby for a long yeah. time. I mean, if he's writing checks, like you're never going to really want to go, go in. Yeah. I kind of talked about this on my podcast, um, yeah. but like Ashley, how was, how old when she got with Michael? Like she didn't grow up with a bunch of money, right? Yeah, she yeah. gets a hostessing job. She meets Michael. He pays for everything in her life. I don't think Ashley has a concept of money. Mm, oh yeah. I, that seems to be the case. Like, like I'm not, has Ashley ever supported herself fully? Like, because she was so young when she got with Michael and yeah. I'm just like, not sure if she like has a real concept of like supporting yourself in the real world and she makes money, right? Like yeah, they can make a lot of money to be on the housewives. So it's not that she can't financially support herself, but I don't know if she knows how to like maneuver this divorce. The fact that she's not hiring a lawyer is insane. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think there was, I think it was on the show. I could be conflating it with something that was set at BravoCon, but it felt like she said at some point somewhere, like, oh, I don't even like pay my bills. Like Michael yeah. handles that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that she is going to be entangled with that for a long time. So we might not hear it on the show, Yeah. but I was like, when just I, I was appreciated her standing up for Giselle to Giselle about that, sure. where she's like, what are you talking about? When Giselle's like, I take divorce seriously. It's like, what does that mean? I know. I mean, I like, I'm just happy that we're moving in the direction away from Michael Darby yeah, at this point. So you know? happy. Yeah. So happy. By the way, Giselle takes divorce seriously and doesn't want Ashley doing a fake divorce storyline, but mm. she thought it was okay to bring the father of her children on TV and pretend yeah. that she was back with him and let her daughters like be part of that. That's fine. But faking a divorce with Michael Darby oh, isn't yeah. get out of here. That's fucked up. Yeah. But speaking of fucked up, the worst of it all was when they have that little sit down. And I got to say like the, even the lighting of the conversation was iconic. The purple oh my God. cue. Wow. <laughs> They're in that dance studio. It's I, the miscalculation that Giselle has Ooh. made here. I don't think Okay, I kind of think that this is like Phaedra and Candy. And mm. I don't, Phaedra, I don't think truly put, played the tape through in what she was accusing Candy of. Sure. Like she accused Candy of trying to rape Portia. And yeah. I don't think that she was actually trying to say that. I think mm -hmm. she was just trying to say like Candy wanted to fuck Portia and like yeah. went to the extreme without realizing it. Yeah, adding it all up. Yeah. And the audience was, horrified and I think that's what's going on with Giselle I think that Giselle thinks what she's saying is just that Chris is trying to fuck her and that makes her uncomfortable she doesn't fully realize I think that what she's actually saying is like Chris tried to assault her yeah yeah I mean Ash uh, no not Ashley uh Candace had like a pretty good response to all this she's like i did not want to talk about this while i was at bravo Con, but it was like this is like the like the yes. down dirtiest thing like someone has done to me on this show essentially well she even said like this is really hard because i believe victims like yeah i believe me too like i never want to say that a woman fe woman's feelings about a man is wrong uh -huh. and giselle though like She's like making it up as she goes. And I think, I truly think she doesn't realize exactly what she's saying yeah. and how it's going to come across. And here's the thing, like 
they could have had, she could have set Chris up for a storyline in a different way. She could have mm-hmm. been like, your husband drinks too much and then came to try and fight with me after the reunion. Okay. Yeah. And that's yeah. fucking lame. And he needs to stay out of women's business. You know that line. Yeah. He needs yeah. to stay out of women's business. And I don't like Chris because he makes me uncomfortable that he's trying to be in our business. Okay. And every, I'd like, that's a storyline, right? Yeah. Like that is a, tired and true housewife story you should have been her story producer this yeah. year <laughs> yeah because like what she said like she is kind of explaining a weird situation like that chris is so drunk that he's like coming to yell at her about the reunion like that is a reasonable thing to be uncomfortable with the fact that she's trying to make it that chris was trying to set her up to fuck her i mean the, she's saying he knew no one was in my uh dressing room And like, so he knew going, like bringing me there that no one would be there. And I thought that there was going to be my glam there. Okay. Watching Candace, like follow along with what Giselle is saying is so wild because remember, she's already had this conversation with Ashley Yeah, and she probably just thought like, okay, this is one off, which by the way, I'm so not on Ashley's side with that text. I'm so team Robin right now. Like he was just like responding to her insta story like he wasn't sliding into her dms he was like hey famous girly come like hang out with your famous friends at my bar please which the reason i got this job probably is because i told them i could bring housewives here to give to give ashley a little bit of credit it seems like in that conversation conversation with robin ashley was not aware that he worked there true So that's a piece of the puzzle, I would say. Yes, but she still felt the need to bring it up to Candace, you know, like, but fine, whatever. They move on from it. Yeah. And so, you know, Candace is thinking like, Ashley brought this up. Mm. I think that's part of the reason she reacted as strongly as she did. You can see the gears turning, like as they're having a conversation. When she's like, my husband? (laughs) Yeah. He, he's your friend, Giselle. Yeah. Like, it's so... We so rarely see get to see a housewife turn around and be like, no, not this storyline. Yeah. That's Ooh. wild. Yeah. I mean, the, the the looking at the camera. Right at the camera. So this is what we're doing? <laughs> this is what we're doing. I mean, and like, Giselle, how, how silly of you to try this with Candace? Because like, Candace is sharp. Like she, you're not going to like pull one over on her. No. And she's. I, she's honestly lucky that Candace didn't lunge at her and hurt her. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I almost wonder if she wanted Candace to do that. Mm, wow. Like, I don't think she's like, I want Candace to hit me, but yeah. I think that Giselle needs Candace to be the out of control cast member. Sure. Okay. And was definitely trying to like go to her into doing something and, this is why I'm so proud of Candace. Like just looking at that camera and being like, absolutely not standing up and be like, where's Eric? Where's Eric? Mm, mm, yeah. And not engaging with it. Like, I don't think two years ago, Candace would have handled it like that. Yeah, for sure. And maybe it's because as you said earlier, she's in a happy place. Yeah. How about when she said about Michael Darby? Oh, <laughs> I mean, making points, making points. Like, let's talk about the creep. <laughs> yeah, making real, and I, on, I think she brought him up, especially one because they've had a famous creep on this show, but yeah. because she's she's putting in her head that Ashley's part of this little mm, gang up. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, I cannot wait to continue. Hopefully, we get taglines one day. I mean, I like, will it be oh, on the yeah. the season finale? We'll get a tagline, perhaps. Yeah, why are? Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, this will be. The upcoming will be the third episode. Hopefully we get a tagline. We usually get a tagline a week out from the premiere if there's going to be a tagline on that episode. But lately these these years, they're like starting with the dramatic opening. Yeah, you know? yeah. They like yeah. dropping us into the scene. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I. this was just, it was so good. I'm really curious how Giselle is going to handle this. Mm. And I'm really curious how she's going to handle the online reaction because- like I said, I'm not so sure she realized that she was like accusing Chris of trying to rape her. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's and, what she was doing. She was saying that. And we're going to go from here to these two women out of this cast are the ones going on an ultimate girls. trip. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> I'm very excited about this season. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. Uh, let's 
chat about a show tens of people are watching. And hopefully, like, maybe a few more catch up soon. The Real Girlfriends in Paris. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is my favorite type of low stakes drama Bravo yes. show. Yeah. I mean, and I think, like, I don't remember the last time they had one that really, like, pulled me in like this. No. I I mean, you guys have compared it to Ladies of London, which I definitely mm. agree with. Sure, because of the international aspect. Yeah, yeah, and Gallery Girls. And also just, like, the low stakeness of it. Like, yeah. it's not, especially season one of Ladies of London. Mm -hmm. um, even though that, that was all more like a housewife show. I agree. This is very Gallery Girls. Like, it's just so, I love it. I mean, watching Margot just, like, smoke in her apartment and cry <laughs> and be rich is, like, I love I love a rich layabout who cries a lot. Like that <laughs> is my goal to be just like totally funded by someone as I smoke cigarettes and cry. Like that that's life goals to me. Uh, I love that. I love like I just love it. It's so good. Yeah, and I think we only have two episodes left. Sadly, mm, probably and ever, ever. Yeah. So. <laughs> Like save save these on your DVR because yes. they're gonna get lost to the the winds. <laughs> it's so sad, but it's so good. I love Asia. Um, I just the cast is really good. Like they did a good job with the cast. Yeah, except for the fact that we did not verify everyone had a visa to stick around for okay. all ten episodes. <laughs> Insane. I mean, you, you kind of like forget that Casey was even on the show at this point. <laughs> it is so crazy. How about like just them being like, you guys can't really stay in Canes because it's like a little too expensive. So like oh, you're gonna have to leave. Like that's the wildest thing to tell someone. I mean, like I love, I love that there are some divisions now, like Aja yes. and Anya now together. Obviously, it's Margot and Victoria, and then Emily. Like I mean. I'm enjoying her, but like she is young for the show. Very young. Yeah. I mean, yes. her being like, oh, I have an idea. Let's put up curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and then she called her mom and her mom is like, what? No, Girl, I'm not I, helping you with gonna, that. I know. She, oh yeah. She expected the mom to like fly over from the <laughs> States to, to Paris to like hop on a ladder and drill in some curtain rods. Oh, because her mom's <laughs> like a famous interior decorator. Yeah, exactly. And so she's yeah. like, what do you mean you're not going to come do this job for me? Yeah. <laughs> her mom was like, no. <laughs> uh, I got to say, Victoria, the Chloe Collette fashion show, I feel like I haven't seen a representation of someone working like – to the bone <laughs> on television. Like she was so run ragged. It's very below deck in okay. some ways. Like yes, that yes, they're yes. like genuinely working. Yeah. I, first of all, Chloe Collette, I can't stop saying it. I just oh, no. randomly out loud. I'm like, Chloe Collette, Chloe Collette, Chloe, Chloe Collette. Collette. Like yes, it's all yes. that's going through my mind at all times. It's such a funny name to me for some reason. Um, I, I can't get over it. I'm very curious, like, if Chloe Collette is a real brand. Like, I mean, like, they, they have, have a website. website. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. But, like, does anybody, has anybody ever worn a Chloe Collette item is what so, I'm asking. Yeah. I don't know if there is a brick and mortar, but Alex and I are going to right. Paris. We are going to the arrondissements. We are going to be amongst the girls. And oh my God. if I, I could. I think if you like DM Aja, she would hang out with you. <laughs> I mean, and she liked one of my tweets today that didn't use a hashtag, yeah. didn't have her name in it. And I oh went to her God. Twitter and she has about 300 followers. Yeah. I think I think you could get almost any of them to hang out with you <laughs> if they're embarrassed. Like they're, they're going to be like, someone's watching? I know, I know, I know. I'm actually like, I it never crosses my mind that a housewife would ever listen to this this little God, you hope not, start up right? podcast, right? But like, part of me is a little scared that a real girly might be. Yeah, because they're like, you're, they're like, somebody's covering us. Yes. Like, <laughs> but like, if you are listening, I love all of you. Yeah, it's honestly a really good cast. Like, yeah. I love the talk of like the wealth stuff, yes. and income disparities. Um, like I said, I just also like, it's bad though. Cause all I want to do is smoke a cigarette when I'm watching this show. <laughs> I'm like, give me a cigarette and I want to smoke oh, it my inside God. my house. I know. Where do we see people smoking inside? N nowhere. <laughs> it's, an, it's incredible. Just like I said, watching Margot, like being a little sad sack, walking around smoking mm. cigarettes, like really does it for me. I know people don't like Margot and I understand that she's not likable per se, yeah. but something about her essence, I find like incredibly 
incredibly compelling for this show. Yeah. I mean, I think her trajectory on the show has been interesting because in the beginning I was, I did not care about her at all. And now yeah, it's like, she, give me more Margot. Yeah. Because she like never left her apartment or exactly. knew anybody. It was like, what is she even doing here? But now I think just like the poor little rich girl of it all mm. just works well in this show. And especially in contrast to Anya yep. in Asia. But at the same time, I'm like, what is Anya doing to like better mm. her circumstances? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I bet you this of, of all the girls to benefit from this show, I would imagine this is going to drive business to her. Yeah. I like, she's the one that makes the most sense for me for why she went on TV. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Also, like, it's just so crazy that Casey left the show. <laughs> like, are we going to check in with her? Can someone FaceTime her? <laughs> Where is Casey? Casey is somebody that, like, you meet and she's really fun and you're like, wow, I love her. Like, this yeah. is great. And then you, like, go to her house and you're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't clean up for company? Okay. I know. Uh, no, uh, fine, not fine, for, okay. Not cleaning up for company, but not cleaning, cleaning up for the cameras. It's... I- it's unfathomable to me. I would never let anybody into my home to film, first of all. And I live in yeah. a very clean home. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's so wild to think about that she didn't clean up. And then like when Anya was like, well, you just like call this number. And she's like, mm, I know. But like, <laughs> it's just like hard. She's that person that like in your early 20s, you're like, she's so fun. And then yeah. by 25, you're like, your sloppiness in all things is exhausting. Yeah. It's like pressing the numbers on the phone. <laughs> just takes it out of me (laughs) which you know like I can relate to but I'm also not trying to live in Paris for that reason you know like I've accepted my lazy lot in life (laughs) (laughs) she's just it's so funny that she's not on this show anymore oh gosh Uh, love the girlies love them um let's kick it over to part two of Beverly Hills okay okay what what are you thinking about the reunion and the season Okay, Either so one. I will say Beverly Hills, this is the least I've ever followed it this season. Okay, interesting. Because I'm just, like, kind of exhausted by it. Sure. Um Like, I haven't had eyes on, like, any of it. But I keep up. Please don't get yeah. me wrong. I'm not a Philistine. Sure. I keep up with everything. I listen yeah. to 18 different Bravo podcasts that recap the <laughs> recap the shows that I don't watch. I mean, you can um, watch, in a way, by listening to recap podcasts. <laughs> literally. Like, that's... Yeah. Everybody, I was like, I don't know if I want to cover new episodes on feathers in my hair. And people are like, no, but you have to because mm. I don't want to watch the show. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I deeply understand that because I wish I could <laughs> listen to a team on podcast recapping it and not have to watch it. Um, so I like obviously like I very much keep up with it, mm. but I haven't like felt an urge to really watch much. Um, okay. I mean, I watch like the clips and I listen yeah. to all the podcasts, but I find... Kathy Hilton well first of all I like find Paris Hilton to be a monster she is a monster and I am like the lone person screaming into the void that she's a racist yeah anti-semite homophobe awful person and so like watching people fawn over Paris is like really upsetting to me and so watching it happen with Kathy I find to be really annoying but I also like don't like Lisa Renna and Erica and Mm. it's a whole thing and I mean I thought the this reunion episode was fine I'm not a huge reunion head in general like rarely do we ever need a three episode reunion this could have been two episodes I think okay okay no I I feel like I'm I'm not usually a reunion person but this one for some reason is keeping my interest like for instance the Atlanta reunion like I, I could have not watched that yeah, and been fine, really. Um, but this one, like, I do feel like things are happening. We're learning some things. Uh, I mean. Garcelle is a star and Garcelle, she's really good at reunions. Yeah. I mean, I think Garcelle has gotten so good at this show in yes. the past year. Yes. I think also like being on The Real has helped mm, because okay. she's like talking to other ladies on camera a lot. And I think it really shows on The Reunion. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, that story about Bill Cosby was yeah. wild. Yep. Horrifying. Um, yeah, I thought that she did great. Crystal is truly frustrating mm-hmm. because sometimes I'm like so on board with her and like she was great in this episode. Like she yeah. found her voice, but sometimes I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, I do think she is making a case for herself this reunion where yes. she might have been more in jeopardy before the reunion. It's like, bring her back. Why not? Yeah, why wouldn't why not? you bring her back? You know, yeah. like, who are you going to replace her with? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, they're bringing back the same cast. Anybody who thinks Rena's going is out of their mind. Although I do wonder, like, with the the ultimatum thing with Kathy, like... Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I think Bravo saw the response to Kathy this past weekend is probably considering whether they want or need her back. Sure. But they also had like the highest ratings in years oh, yeah, um, yeah. on Beverly Hills. And here's the other thing. Like, I'm not sure if it's a real ultimatum because I'm not sure Kathy would ever agree to be a housewife mm. full time and yeah. like fully commit to it. So are they going to give up Lisa for a friend of, I'm not so sure. Well, they have, they have eight cast members now yes. who are full time. And then also by giving up Rena, at least for a year, we could bring Denise for a year. <sighs> I don't like Denise Richards very yeah. much as a housewife. Sure. I think that she will go down much like Tinsley. Sorry to say, I know these are hot <gasps> takes as like not great housewives who were really bullied in a way that made people really root for them. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. like as actual housewives aren't that good. Yeah. And I feel like I'm not sure what Denise would look like in a coming back capacity. Um, I don't know. I do like the idea of bringing her and her like QAnon husband on and like kind of mm. letting that all out because yeah. I think it's funny. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Do you think Denise would come back? Uh, you know, I'm following a little bit the off season antics of like these gals taking pictures with each other mm -hmm. or people who are not on the show anymore. Mm -hmm. And there was recently a, a Sutton Denise and someone else and Camille get together. <laughs> 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 okay. And, and Camille, I don't need like, no. I, I, it's like, a, it's a little too try hardy with her. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I like maybe it could work if they give Lisa a pause, if you will. Mm. Um, I'm just not sure what it looks like if you get rid of her. Yeah. She's made herself very valuable in this cast. Yeah. But also at the same time, I'm like, whatever, get rid of her. See what happens. Yeah, like, I'm not I'm not married to anyone. Yeah, um, it's not like she can't ever come back. Um, I'm not sure how you keep Renna and get and or you get rid of Renna and you don't keep Erica. Like, or you keep Erica. Sorry. That makes oh, without, sense. without, yeah. Rena, yeah. I, yeah. how does Erica exist on the show without Lisa Renna? Yeah. Um, I do think that the turmoil amongst the Fox Force five, which has been confirmed by Teddy Joe on her podcast. Thank God. Um, All I want is for them to not be friends anymore. Yeah. I think she said that the group chat has been quiet for a while. So, we oh, I loved the mention of the other group chat. Oh my God. Yes. That like the look on Garcelle's face. Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, it's the Fox Force 5 group chat. Yeah. You have little Fox emojis in that group chat. We know. Okay. Hold on. We need to talk about the revelation that that was actually Lisa's video. Oh, yeah. 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 And that she just let Erica take the heat for that. <laughs> Erica was like happy to. Like, I think Erica, I think Erica right now is happy when people are upset with her over something that doesn't have to do with Tom. That's, yeah, that's probably really accurate. I, I would like them to get rid of Erica. I think that we need, I would, I think if Lisa and Erica go, that could be really interesting and mm. open some stuff up. Um, they would need somebody to kind of be stepping up into more of a outward shit stir, which Kyle isn't, you know, she's more yeah. of a passive shit stir. So I'm not sure who they would replace them with, but I think I would be okay with like removing the two of them and, yeah focusing on some other things um erica is just like such a dark presence yeah that it's i don't know how they like keep bringing her back yeah 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 oh well we are also definitely going to be losing diana who was full-time so we oh, have a slot yeah. you know yeah hmm. that's diana <laughs> Ooh, I mean, what's so funny is Diana saying, I swear nobody in this group would ever go after your dear son, I swear. And like, uh, Erica literally did on the show. <laughs> <laughs> on camera. On camera. Like, it aired on TV. Yeah. So that's this thing we all watch together, Diana. <laughs> Diana <sighs> is just so bad at the show. I think I think I read somewhere that she didn't watch anything before 
filming. So I she was. I I never believe that, and I believe that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like to to do so poorly as a housewife, we haven't seen like this in a minute. Imagine never like going on a show that has 12 seasons for you to study and you just don't yeah. and you just show up. That's wild. I mean, it's like the equivalent of the nightmare of forgetting to study for your test and just showing yes. up and taking it. Like she forgot yes. to study. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm very curious about like where they go from here on out. Um, mm. Oh, and I thought Carcella Green to do the second print mm. to take the Hamlin girl out of her book yeah. to be really interesting i was like garcelle's a really good person yeah i mean i think like on her side obviously it's just she's, not worth it yeah she's not gonna like stop the presses and cancel the book yeah, release but like if she can do something that really doesn't affect her in any way like okay and sure, i think she said they out. took it out of the audiobook production mm, yes 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 um it's so like, but I loved how Lisa was like, oh, that was the lawyers. I'm like, you called the lawyers. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like Lisa was like, oh, you know how those lawyers are. They just get involved and make everything Straight nuts. Out. Like her lawyer just like read the book and was like, Lisa, I'm calling on your behalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we also got the revelation. I mean, we knew this, but Garcelle confirming that she filmed with Lisa Vanderpump for Vanderpump Rules. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, bring Lisa Vanderpump back. <laughs> that see, that would be something. <laughs> like, why not? Why the fuck not? Get rid of Erica and Renan. Bring Vanderpump back. And I Ooh. love to watch Kyle and Vanderpump fight. I love it. I love it. It brings me so much joy. Bring her back. What like? What's she doing? Yeah, I mean, I think like Lisa needs it bad. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because I mean, not only is Vanderpump Rules not what it once was, but her role on the show makes less sense than ever it makes absolutely no sense and i think that lisa misses the housewives and like the fame of yeah. being the most beloved housewife yeah for sure she should yeah. come back and people would lose their minds and be so happy they would love it <laughs> there'll like, be parades in the street tr- in west I mean, yeah i was gonna say i'm leading the parade in west hollywood <laughs> i don't can, and i'm not like a vanderpump stan in any mm. way but i do think that she would bring a lightness mm-hmm. that the show needs even though this really i mean i know i just said this is like the least i followed it but yeah. It also has been like the most, at least the most stuff worth talking about on Beverly Hills in the last, what, four years. Yeah. So I just, I don't, if I'm production, I don't think I make a cast change. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why they kept the the cast from last year around. Yeah. So. It's yeah. like, you know, at least give it one more year. People are clearly tuning in, even if they are hating it. Yeah. I mean, the, the ratings are insane they just keep like getting higher and higher each episode yeah so yeah. i don't know and i also don't think kathy will refuse to film with lisa renna it could be a, another situation like this year where she shows up halfway through the season that's what i think i mean kathy clearly wants to be famous that's why she's on this show mm. yeah. like i think she will be like yeah i want to do that yeah yeah okay let's finally get to salt lake city uh, i this episode <laughs> <sighs> this season has been great yeah so far i'm loving yeah. it i think it's got such a different vibe than other shows right now yes because we're kind of suffocating with only five housewives like when jen left and lisa meredith heather and whitney had to go to dinner because <laughs> yes. there's only four of them like that's incredible like, like like not not only are they not breaking up into small groups it's like well i guess we're all going together <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i mean we're picking up with the lingerie party which i was not expecting it to take the twists and turns that it did how Whitney has turned herself into the victim in this is mm-hmm. so wild to me. I don't yeah. mean with like her childhood stuff. That's not what I'm yeah, talking sure, about. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Whitney sat there with Meredith and said, oh yeah, I've heard those. I've heard she fucked this person specifically for yes. this. Yeah. Like she, and then her being like, we have to tell. I'm not keeping this secret. I refuse to keep this secret. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> Whitney, what? <laughs> like you were the gossiper. What are you talking about? Whitney acts like Meredith came over, held her down, and was like, yeah. Lisa's a prostitute. And Whitney's like, no, don't tell me that. Please don't tell me that. Like, yeah, yeah. It's so wild to me that Whitney has, like, centered herself in this and, like, 
made herself the victim in this Lisa situation. Mm -hmm. And it's but, just but so the funny part to me is now Heather could have easily won this situation <sighs> by being like, Whitney, like I was not part of this. I don't want to talk about this. Like, this is clearly something that you discussed with Meredith. Like, and you, if you want to bring that up to Lisa, great. But now spinning it of like, this was supposed to be <laughs> the Jen Shah <laughs> is going away and probably dying in prison. <laughs> Girls weekend. Like, <laughs> Heather is so codependent. Like <sighs> she like wants to rock Jen like a little baby. Like <laughs> she wants to hold Jen in her arms and just like rock her to sleep. Like yeah, she's this is about Jen. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not. Okay, like and like if anything, Jen's trip. happy. Jen's happy. This is all happening. By the way, like when the Jen focus said that, her. when Jen said that she can't get Botox. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Comedy queen. <laughs> uh, bring oh my bring God. us at 2 11 a.m. Crystal Pussy, aka her makeup <laughs> artist, aka twerking instructor. When Meredith is twerking <laughs> in that latex. <laughs> like, the, 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 see, like the small cast is making magic happen where, like, if it was a bigger cast, maybe Meredith would have just watched. Like, yeah, or she would have like gone to bed because she didn't need to stay up and film because yeah. other people are filming. Whitney being so fucking blasted and like storming off in her thong <laughs> is like so wild. Wait, the fact that we got footage of her waking up <laughs> to go rip up the card in Heather's bedroom. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say something controversial. Okay. If Whitney wants to be on, I'm somebody that's been on a healing journey, right? Mm, mm, mm. I got sober. I did yeah. a bunch of trauma work. I did sure. EDMR, as Whitney calls it. I did EMDR, mm -hmm. uh, the thing that her brother's supposedly doing. That's a whole a different thing. I'm, a Dorit did last year, or is that something else? I think Dorit did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm really concerned about the way that Whitney is describing her brother's therapy as memory recall and that he's remembering things and telling. Uh, it, it's making me nervous. Um, yeah memory recall is like really controversial and bad in the therapy world and yeah, i've heard about that uh it's very teal swan if you know about teal swan I don't um you should watch the documentary and listen to the okay. podcast teal you'll see why it's so worrisome but basically repressed memories like aren't real sure. and i what i'm hoping is whitney is like just i what i hope is that her brother is in therapy for the first time and like finally willing to talk about things with whitney that he wasn't mm. willing to talk about before yeah what i'm worried is that he's working with a memory recall therapist and right. pulling up repressed memories and yeah. like giving them to whitney i don't know i think whitney might just be not explaining it very well that's yeah, what i'm I mean, hoping it's if we're only this is the third episode i mm -hmm. want to say mm -hmm. and like we were introduced to this in the first episode and we're like slowly landing on what we're talking about. Yeah. But we're, we haven't gotten there yet. Whitney so definitely the is trauma. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, we've yeah. met her dad. Like yeah, yeah. I, I'm not doubting that Whitney is trauma. I'm just really worried about the memory recall aspect. But sure. as somebody that went on a healing journey mm -hmm. who used to act pretty similar to Whitney, um, she needs to slow on the drinking if she's going to be doing this because yeah. it is a mess. It is a, such a messy combo. By the way, is Winnie in therapy or is she just seen like shamans? Oh yeah. I mean, I don't think we've, <laughs> we've met a therapist yet, but also we I always heard a therapist. I like, I don't want the therapist that she is seeing to be one of mm. the camera therapists. No, 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 no. Yeah. But like, I hope she is seeing a real therapist. Um, yeah. And not someone that's like having her walk through Lisa Barlow's inner child stuff. Mm, like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I hope that's not the extent of her healing. But yeah. Whitney is really sad to watch for me because she's clearly really trying to get better and deal with her stuff and watching her drink so heavily. Mm. I think that she's going to continue to be like this in the entire season because she is in like a, a high, I can't think of the word, but like a, basically like in a, panic response mode okay. constantly because she's like dealing with stuff that she hasn't dealt with yeah and then she's getting blasted and when you're that drunk and you're that triggered like there's no line between yeah. like your emotions and what's really happening and like when she showed up to her sibling's house which was 
actually a beautiful scene. But mm. when I saw her with the bottle walking in, I'm like, I wish she should have yeah. left the bottle at home. Like, yeah, I definitely noticed that. I just, I'm worried about how this is going to play out the rest of the season with the level that she's drinking to with the seriousness yeah. of what she's talking about. And by the way, Heather handled it so poorly when she was like, your little thing, like whatever she was saying. I was like, I Heather. mean, Heather, like she fumbles the ball all the time. Yeah. She like people would be throwing her parades. If not just like constantly getting in her own way, like, especially yeah. when we do reunions with Heather, but like even stuff like this, like, yeah, just, just, Focus on what what Whitney's really wrong about and, like, not trying to, like, <laughs> I don't know. And I don't think she was trying to be, like, the abuse is little. But what she's trying to say is, like, you're turning everything into you. It doesn't make any sense. Like, but she just said it so poorly. But yeah. um, I loved the scene with her siblings. I was really touched just watching her sister, like, silently mm. weep next to her, basically. Yeah. Um it's nice to see that they're all on a similar journey and yeah. like how validated Whitney felt. And that is really great. And I love that aspect, but I'm almost like, if we're going to do a healing journey, we might want to get off reality TV. Sure. It. Yeah. It was wild that that all took place and she gets back to the house and we're still kind of in <laughs> morning mode <laughs> saying good morning to each other at two 15. <laughs> oh my gosh. When they go out to dinner that night, and oh, Whitney yeah. is crying to Lisa about <laughs> Heather not having her back about the rumors of oh Lisa being God. a prostitute. <laughs> Lisa's are, like, can we stop? Can we stop saying prostitute? <laughs> which, by the way, is not. I don't use the word prostitute. That's what they're calling it yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like the fact that is an incredible moment of reality TV. She's like, can you believe she called me a liar? And Lisa's like. <laughs> Lisa's supposed to be like feeling bad for Whitney yeah. that Heather yeah. called her a liar about the most horrific thing that she said about Lisa. <laughs> like, but the only reason all this chaos is happening is because there's n so few people on this yes, show. <laughs> which is that's why it's incredible. Like the fact yeah. that we get this like post mortem dinner. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so oh, and the scene of Lisa and Meredith hugging. Oh my God. Yes, 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 when yes. When Jen yes. leaves and they just like have a very long hug, I know, which I thought was very real. Like it was an emotional moment. Their friends going to prison. It does. <laughs> it doesn't seem like things will last though. No, I don't think it will. But I mean, yeah. just the fact that Lisa and Meredith were at a dinner, just like sitting across from each yeah, other. <laughs> like, I know. And that would, what, it just wouldn't happen. on other When franchises. Meredith is talking about her childhood, it's like, when it comes to Meredith, it's hard picturing her as a child, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so true. She's, like when you're a kid and like you go to school and you see teachers, like it's hard to imagine them not as a teacher. <laughs> that's yeah. so, oh my gosh, that's so true. Okay. The little fireside powwow in pajamas after dinner. <laughs> I mean, giving out the FBI hats and then... They're like, oh, I wonder what Jen thinks of this. And I was getting the flashback of her being like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> when they're, when, who's saying it? Heather, because Heather is like desperately clinging to this idea that Jen is innocent. Yeah. Uh, when she goes, maybe Stu's going to like testify for her. Or, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, Meredith's like, I don't think that's the case. Yeah. There's two things I don't understand about this conversation. Number one, like them seemingly having this conversation for the first time. Whereas I would think you would have had this conversation already. Yeah. Because when did, uh, Stu plead guilty? Oh, I'm not talking about like the specifics of like the, of Stu pleading guilty. Just kind of like, is Jen going to prison? Is like, she going to plead out? Jen, Jen is being prosecuted by like the Southern district of New York. Mm -hmm. Like we and, and I think even when she was arrested, several people had pled guilty that were involved in the enterprise. That's how they arrested her. Yeah. So like, she's not too far off from where she originally was. She's just like in as bad as a place as she can really get. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't understand how, if I was on this show, I would want, I'd be like, I would know everything. I would have read the friggin' like indictment. Are I would, you kidding like, me? I'd be like in New York watching the court. Yeah. The court, the motion or the hearing so that I could report back to everybody. Yeah, exactly. So there's that. And then the other part that doesn't make a lot of sense to me is like Meredith of everyone seems to have like the clearest understanding of what's going on mm -hmm. and yet is now ready to like rally around Jen now. 
it's very weird watching this after she's pled guilty, obviously. Mm. But I get that if it's your friend, it's different, right? I, I do get that, like, mm-hmm. that when your friend is arrested, it's hard to be like, okay, bye, like, you did yeah. it, you're guilty. Like, I get that that's not really a natural human response, right? Yeah. I get that, but I don't know. I, as somebody and Meredith, that, Meredith and her were not friends. Like, yeah, they were that's also, yeah, fighting. they were not friends. <laughs> the fact that, like, they're all sitting back and they're like, we just really need to support her. I'm like, <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, Jen is acting sense. like every well I mean because she's pretending that she's innocent yeah. and like I would not be able to sit there and listen to her go on about how like her life is being taken from her her kids are being punished like I wouldn't be able to sit there and listen to it because even if she wasn't guilty she got herself in some shit that got involved in this you know yeah, yeah. like I I don't know even I just wouldn't be I would not be able to deal with that I don't know how they're all sitting there and being like yes I know and then even after the fact being like we just have to support her yeah I mean if I think if I was in the the situation I'd be like listen I hope you can figure it out and do what's best for you but like I (laughs) I'm not gonna be like like, rah 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 I'd be like so are they offering you a deal are you gonna take it (laughs) Like, yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I guess some people just like truly don't have an understanding of the justice system. Sure. Yeah. Which is hard for me to imagine. But mm-hmm. when, yeah, it's so, it's so weird watching how they talk about this. You're so right. And part of it, I think, is because she pled guilty. But I felt this way watching last season before yeah. she pled guilty. Yeah. But the, I was more understanding of the confusion amongst them as they were processing it. Like, yeah. In real time or like a few weeks after. But it's now that we, we're in a whole new season, like you guys still don't really seem to understand what's going on. <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. wild. It's really yeah. wild. Yeah, I'm excited. Next week we're finally fleshing out the cast with friends of <laughs> I think like all three will be in attendance. By the way, can we just talk about how wild it is? that Meredith and Whitney are saying that Lisa's fucking other men for Vita tequila and and jazz tickets. Like that's the most wild accusation that's ever been made about somebody on housewives. Honestly, like that, I mean, well maybe Phaedra to candy, but like Mm. that is so fucking bad. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That you, (laughs) you're not just accusing someone of cheating on their husband. You have taken it to such an insane level I I feel like we're not talking enough about like mm. how bad those accusations are and how wild it is that they're like saying it with their chest. Well, well Meredith I, is being like, I I didn't say that. I'm I think part sure of the reason can. for that is that Whitney and Lisa are, are the best of friends right now. So it's like clearly not that bad it's, to Lisa. It's so weird. Oh my God. It's so yeah. weird. Lisa's being really funny. I mean, the fact that Lisa sat down at that dinner the next night, like yeah. it, I, yeah, I don't love Lisa, but like that's some all-star housewife material there. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the fact that she let Whitney cry about Heather not believing her, like that is commendable. <laughs> wow what a week what great episodes i mean like i feel like this week yeah having you on like you like sometimes like a week will be like oh what are we talking about yeah but this was like this was episode so after good. episode yeah, so yeah. Good. salt lake and potomac being on at the same time is Ooh. magical Golden. they should the keep up era. with the schedule yeah okay so we do have a freak of the week and one true queen to crown uh i love opening it to the opening the floor to our guest and maybe theming it this week to who do you think out of BravoCon was the freak of the week? Yeah. So one Jen Shaw, of course, <laughs> uh, Jen showing up uninvited, uh, telling people she's not going to prison. Like I she mean, was telling multiple people, I'm not going to prison. It's like, well, are you going to run? Like, <laughs> I mean, like the fact that, anyone in her life is letting her open her mouth about the case before the sentencing date is nuts. Like the prosecutors could read those stories and tell the judge that she's telling people that she's not going to prison. Yeah. Play the, play the, play the Tamara judge's live. (laughs) And she didn't like, she didn't take a strict 
sentencing. Like she didn't take a sentencing that had a strict amount of time. Yeah. She could theoretically, if she plays her cards right, plays her card right, be sentenced to a very small amount of prison time Mm -hmm. and running around telling people you're not going to prison, being on TV, acting crazy is not going to help. Yeah, not going to help at all. (laughs) Okay, uh, who is our one true queen? Um, I would say it's Ashley Darby for Mm. hopefully hooking up with Luke from Summer House. That is such a hot couple. Um, I desperately want that to happen. That's when I saw those pictures, I was like, (gasps) I know. I mean, they are a beautiful couple. I, but as, as, uh, so Luke and Ashley were both on Watch Robins Live last night, and he kind of fumbled the ball when Andy was asking about it. He's like, oh, uh, yeah, there's the train. And then Andy's like, a train wreck? What? Oh. And then like, then everyone's like, running a train? Like, back to OC conversation. He's like, no, no, the Amtrak. I could take the Amtrak down to D.C. from New York. I, like, I don't oh, want them God. to be together, but I love the idea of Ashley Darby going to BravoCon and fucking a hot guy. Yeah. I love it. I lo- like she deserves that, it after everything she's been through. <laughs> that is queen behavior. Like, just getting with the hottest guy on Bravo, which Luke kind of is. Yeah, definitely up there definitely up there. So good for you, Ashley Darby. You know, I, I celebrate any woman that leaves a scumbag and then Mm. sleeps with hot men. Like we, we celebrate you, Ashley. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Liz, thank you so much for coming on this week. Um, remind us about your podcast and the Patreon. Yes. So feathers in my hair is out every Sunday where I talk about teen mom. You can go to patreon.com slash Liz explains. Like I said, this week is a Potomac episode. Last week I did VH1 Family Therapy, which Ooh. was really interesting. That aired many years ago. Yeah. So truly like a wide range of shows. You can follow me on Twitter at Bentley Liz 2 because mm. Bentley Liz 1 got suspended forever <laughs> um, <laughs> for posting copyrighted music. Did you know oh, that's a God. thing? Oh, yeah. Um, so be careful about doing that. But yeah, you can follow me at Bentley Liz 2 and yeah. Uh, so obviously come through queen.com for all things come through queen over on Patreon. We don't have a pre-show this week cause this week's so supersized, but we do have a bonus episode, uh, Ooh, conti- continuing <laughs> our journey with, uh, the iconic moments of 15 more housewives. Brent and I discuss the likes of Candace Dillard Bassett. Hello. We discuss Luann. Caroline Manzo, a bunch of legends up there, and then some flops to round out the cast. So, I love you guys ranking stuff and picking um, favorites. And thank you. I really like the randomness of the 15 favorites. Like, yeah. I, I mean, that's like the glory of the number generator, just picking like the most random people you could think of. I love everybody <laughs> needs to listen to their rankings so that you can hear Brendan being like, your rankings don't make sense, Dan, mm. and fighting about math in a way that I find incredibly <laughs> pleasing. I love your bonus episodes. I'm excited there's one this week. Thank you. Yeah, so obviously come through queen.com for that. And just like, comment, subscribe, heart share, retweet. Love us, love us, please retweet. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. I wanna see ya come through, Queen.